Good morning, I'm Pastor Dustin Abbott from Emmanuel Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church and I'm here for your Thursday morning devotion. I want to direct your attention today into the Old Testament to the book of 1 Kings and we're going to read from the latter portion of chapter 14. Now the Bible is quite selective in what is included as it recounts the history of the period of the kings. And so when it gives attention to certain details, it is because those details are for us the most important things to glean from. And so I think that once again, the language of scripture is very intentional as it talks about something when it comes to the son of King Solomon by the name of Rehoboam. So the Bible notes, this is verse 25 of 1 Kings uh, chapter 14. It happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. So the Bible notes that early on in the life of Rehoboam, Rehoboam in many ways, he inherited uh, some growing political and spiritual issues in Israel. King Solomon, of course, had reached a kind of a zenith of the, the time of Israel in terms of wealth and prominence. And of course, he himself was a, a man of superior wisdom given by God, superior wealth and probably more power and influence than any king before him at that point. His son was not of the same quality, not of the same measure. And we see very early on that Rehoboam took bad counsel. He asked both the senior counselors that had been there with King Solomon. And then he also asked some of his peers and he received poor counsel from them. And he chose the poor counsel and he alienated the people of Israel. And as a byproduct, very early on in his reign, the kingdom is divided into uh, splitting off with only two tribes remaining with him in the southern kingdom now of Judah. Ten tribes that broke off and became the northern kingdom of Israel. We also see, however, that Rehoboam's walk with God was similarly disappointing in that he made poor decisions there. And so fairly swiftly, the Bible says it's only the fifth year into his reign, the Bible allows an invasion by the Pharaoh of Egypt. And Pharaoh Shishak comes and, uh, and beats him in battle and sieges the city Jerusalem. And in the process, he comes in and he pillages the treasures of the king's house and then also of the house of God. Now the Bible is specific, uh, while it says generically about gold and silver and other such items, it is specific about uh, these gold shields. And we see if we go back to the life of Solomon, that Solomon reached a place of such great economic wealth. There's so much gold that was pouring in, he began to do you know, rather maybe frivolous things with it, including making these uh, shields that were out of solid beaten gold. And they were hung in one of the palaces that he had built, the house of the force of, of Lebanon. And, and so there it prominently displayed were these ceremonial shields made of gold that would be carried at, you know, certain, you know, civil public events. And, uh, you know, would just kind of display the wealth and the might of the kingdom of, of Israel at the time. So these are amongst the most notable items that are taken by King Shishak of Pharaoh. Now, what's interesting is the Bible notes what Rehoboam's, King Rehoboam's response was. In verse 27, Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them, then brought them back into the guard room. So the Bible notes here that Rehoboam's response was to replace the originals with counterfeits. They uh, had a similar, you know, color-ish if you didn't look too close. They had a similar kind of shine if they were polished the right way. And they were used in the exact same fashion. So whenever it was time for these, you know, civil ceremonies, uh, ceremonies of state, that his guard would go in and they would t carry these bronze shields and they would carry them in the same kind of fashion as previously the gold shields had been carried. The Bible is letting us know, however, that this was a 
it was a cheap imitation that while you know bronze has yeah kind of a similar color and a similar kind of shine it has in no way the value of gold gold has been a a, a metal that is fairly rare that has been valued by humans as basically as long as there have been humans there's something about it its ability of to be pure its its appearance that has made a lasting impression upon people as being a representative of wealth of value and even of, of permanence it is a material that is is not really destructible it just you know can it, it comes back in one form or another it's it's easy to manipulate it's easy to form into precious items be they jewelry or you know any other such thing and so still today, here we are in 2021, and the price of gold is, is probably higher at the moment than it's ever been before. And in times of unrest, lots of that these days, uh, people, investors will flock to gold because it has that sense of permanence that while currencies may value and devalue, gold is a means of preserving wealth, preserving value. And so again, it's something that's been valued all along. Bronze, brass, not so much. And so we see here that the Bible is trying to teach us a lesson here. And I think that the answer to that lesson is found if we skip to the New Testament. And in Paul's final letter to uh, the young pastor Timothy, he writes in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, he says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. He goes on to give a, a list, a, quite an extensive list of behaviors and types of people that will typify these last days and sums it up in verse 5 by saying, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. So amidst the wickedness of the final day, Paul also notes that there is going to be imitation religion, imitation worship, imitation of godliness but it has somewhat of the form but it lacks the power the merit the value of that thing and i think that there is a very important connection between these two things you see satan loves to come in and to steal away from individuals and even from churches collectively he's a thief jesus says and he comes to steal to kill and destroy so much like shy shack pharaoh he comes in and he pillages he loves to pillage the house of god and in many cases, he, he steals away some of the most precious things that we have. Maybe it's the purity of the doctrinal message, the message of salvation that leads to eternal life. Or maybe it's coming in and stealing away separation from the world and the kind of true holiness that the book of Hebrews tells us without which no man can see the Lord. Or maybe he steals away genuine worship that is predicated by the move of the Spirit or the kind of powerful, effectual prayer that was known in generations past that touched heaven and changed things here on earth. So often when that happens, when theft occurs like that, people respond, religious leaders respond in a very similar way to what King Rehoboam did in that they find an imitation that looks a little bit like the original if you don't look too close and then try to dress it up and use it in the same way as what you did the genuine article. So instead of a, a message that preached that is the true saving message, the purity of the doctrine and the gospel, instead there will be a message of, of tolerance and of the social issues of the day, uh, a striving for relevance rather than something that might offend someone or when it comes to the separation from the world that rather than having holiness that it will become some other issue that people fixate on and they replace as a value system in their life when it comes to worship very often it is replaced with a choreographed response that looks kind of similar except for you can just see the lack and experience the lack of the guiding hand of the Spirit that makes it a genuine article that makes it really powerful and effective when it comes to to effective prayer that you know often that has been lost but you know we have nicer prayer rooms than we ever have before or maybe we've got different programs and ministries that you know that unfortunately though end up being us relying on our resources rather than seeking God and allowing his spirit to intervene the point being is that bronze shields are not gold shields. Brass is not gold. It has a roughly similar look, but it lacks the authenticity and the value of it. 
And so my message to you is this, don't fall into the trap that King Rehoboam did. I'll tell you what the right response of Rehoboam's would have been. The right response would have been to trust in God and to go back and to recover what had been lost. We heard a devotion recently about how that, uh, that King David, even before he was king of Israel, how that uh, the enemy came and stole away from uh, Ziklag, his, his you know, little capital city at the time, and stole away everything but how that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He sought God, he went after and against a superior force, he went and he wiped them out and he recovered all. That would have been the right response for Rehoboam to refuse to lose the value of what they had. But instead, he chose the easy way and just replaced it with a counterfeit. Don't fall into that trap. Don't follow in the path of Rehoboam. Things that Satan steals away from us are precious things, things that we must have. And we have to go and to storm the very gates of hell. And Jesus promised that the gates of hell themselves cannot resist the power and the force of God's true church. And so if we will be that church and we will step onto the battlefield, I believe that we can recover what has been lost and we can even deepen and grow its value in our own personal walk. But let's not settle for a counterfeit. This pandemic has robbed away many things from people and I fear that for many churches or individuals, even when they come back to normal, it's gonna be what is so often called a new normal. That's not quite the same and not quite as precious not quite as deep and not quite as profound. But I refuse to settle for less. I'm not looking for an imitation gospel. I want the genuine article. And that means I'm going to have to fight. And that means that you have to fight to not allow Satan to casually steal away the things that are most precious for us. So I want to challenge you today. Don't replace the true article, the gold, with some cheap brassy imitation. It's not what God wants for you or for your life. So I want to challenge you today to not be a Rehoboam, but instead to fight, to keep, to preserve, or maybe even to regain the precious gold things that Satan steals away from us. God bless you. Hope that's food for thought. Have a great weekend. Get into God's house. We'll see you next week online. God bless you. Amen. <music>